Greetings class, uh, out here, tailgate. I'm gonna go over a few air sampling uh, principles. So the practice of air sampling has always been one of my favorite things about industrial hygiene. So here I have some air sampling pumps. This is the Gill Air. And this is what we do for a lot of personal sampling. So asbestos, lead, all types of metals, even some of the volatile organics. So I know we've been covering this in uh, champ uh, the chapter that we're currently in but even the colorimetric tubes at a lower flow can be used with the air sampling pump, okay? So this is the workhorse of industrial hygiene. And a lot of times what we're doing is getting things together so that we can measure the environment. So that exposure assessment that we do initially, the interviews, when we see what the frequency and the exposure may be, this is the way we validate it by doing this right here. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, boy. Sinuses. Okay. So in order to make sure we have a valid sample, we first must calibrate the pump. So this is a primary calibrator. It's a dry cal. I'm going to turn this on. And once it's on, it's going to read in liters. So here, I place the calibrator. And then I grab a cassette. Again, this would be something that we could measure dust. Uh, we can measure metals, asbestos, uh, chromium-6, silica, and different modifications you would do in order to get your sample. So here, this is the back of the actual cassette, so you don't want to put it on backwards, which would be this way. You want to put it on forward so that the cassette itself is facing and the air is being pulled by the pump through here in this inlet. So we already took off the covers and the plugs. And you keep these on until you're ready to do the sampling so that nothing gets in there that would cross contaminate your sample. All right. So this is going to allow us to know where our flow rate is for doing the monitoring. And with monitoring, it's going to be variations on flow rate, duration of time. And a lot of times I like to check with the lab or look up a NIOSH analytical method for sampling or even the OSHA sampling method just to make sure that I'm doing it in a proper way. Now this kind of works in conjunction with the next chapter as we're going to talk about the laboratory and how they play such a vital part in what we do. But the method that we do with our air sampling is going to match the method that they do with the analysis. Okay? So if I go here, you'll see the switch for on and off, and I click on, and you hear it humming? Yeah, that's letting me know the air is being pulled in. And again, it's very important that you have the cassette in the right direction. So air is being pulled in through here. The analyte, let's say it's lead, for example, is going to be collected here or maybe welding fumes. So it actually may change colors from a white to a gray or a brown. And that's fine. A lot of times that doesn't mean the concentration is reflected on what you see. I mean, it could be really dirty and you get nothing as far as lead or whatever you're measuring for. So here, the air is being pulled in. I'm going to actually click on read. Oh, okay. And here you can actually see that the first time I hit read, it gave us a level of 2.013 liters. If I go to read again, it's automatically in this section right here going to pull the air and measure it for that volume. So you see here now it's been changed. So we have the average flow and then the current flow. So it averages it out automatically. And then hit read again. By this time we've already gotten three samples uh, for the calibration. So the average of that is gonna be 2.004. So two liters. Sometimes you're not gonna get the right or exact two liters. Sometimes it's gonna be 1.998. Sometimes it's gonna be 
2.1. So depending on how you can actually adjust your instrument. So in here, we have a flow rate adjuster. So we will use a, a small precision screwdriver to change that. I'm gonna demonstrate that right now so that you can see how the flow rate changes. So I can either go higher or lower. And usually the current is gonna pick up a little bit more. So you see it's gonna be a little louder, a little faster. And I gotta get my sample train up here. So this is why it's important sometimes to do this stuff in your office so that you don't have too many interferences. So if I go here and I hit read, let's see what it does. See, the top number has now gone up to 2.2, all right? So sometimes you have to play with it a little bit. We're gonna turn it back down and try to get it closer to two. And we're gonna hit read again. And we're back down to this one being 2.091. And what you would probably need to do at this point if you were playing with it to get the actual readings is actually hold the stop to clear and then take those three readings again. Now we're going over this because the calibration is the most important part of validating that the sample was taken at the correct flow rate and it's defensible by using the primary calibrator, okay? So here we have an average reading of 2.08, close enough. And at this point, another thing just to be noted is that you want your pump to run for a while, you know, at least a couple of minutes, warm up, so it's gonna be a consistent flow. So this is what we talk about is the consistent flow of this right here should be for at least an eight hour time. And you have up here the battery light when it's actually green to easily give you eight hours at this flow rate. Now, what we do is we do a pre-calibration and then at the end of the shift, or when you get back to the office, you do a post calibration. Then you take the average of that and that's your flow rate for the sample that you have here. I'm gonna turn it off right now. As you can see, you would do the same thing with the other pumps. And if you also notice that we have a cover, a lot of times you wanna lock this in place so that the um, sample can be tampered with by the employee. And also you're gonna write down the employee number or where you took the sample on your chain of custody or your form and you're also going to put down the serial number for this particular pump so it'll be serial number flow rate pre post start time start time and if you're looking at the chain of custody you would put in there what type of analysis you want all right so this is a typical case that you have where you may have five pumps including the one we have right there you have your sample tubes you have your chain of custody, you have a Sharpie, and you have some more cassettes. Okay, so um, back up a little bit. Once you've done all that, you get with your employees and you have them come in and you explain to them what you're doing. Transparency is very important. See if they have any questions. And then you're gonna have them take this pump and put on their belt. If they don't have a belt, you could get creative and put some duct tape around them. But usually, put it around your belt. And as you can see, sometimes it's a challenge just to get that going. And then you're gonna run the cassette up to the breathing zone. So right in here, it shouldn't be hanging out too far. And if you have a welding hood, sometimes you can put it on that, but you want to click it on the lapel. And again, you're going to turn it on. You as the industrial hygienist will lock this in place. The time you turn it on is going to be the start time. All throughout them working, you'll take notes. Um, you'll actually ask them different questions. You know, you'll check back to make sure this is still running because sometimes it does go off. If at any time, and this is what I always tell them, make sure if you have a jacket on, let me know you can take the jacket off because that's where my sample is. Uh, make sure that this right here, this inlet, 
does not get clogged because anytime it gets clogged it has a fault if you come in on this right here i'm going to plug this right here and you'll see it just gets loud and it will eventually turn off if it's plugged so you want to make sure that it's not plugged and really they can go around it's pretty sturdy you know the tube is on the back so it doesn't get in the way and they can work but again you're taking notes when they go to lunch Make sure you check to make sure they don't take this uh, pump with them to McDonald's or Burger King, unless they're gonna get you something to eat too. But you wanna make sure that the pump, the sample, stays usually at the job site. So you would take the pump off, turn it off, record the time that you stopped it, and then have them come back and see you when they return from their break or lunch if they're gonna be leaving the site. That's very important. You don't wanna have to explain why you don't have your pump in your sample. All right. Um, a few other things we'll probably talk about in the next video, but for right now, this is air sampling. Um, I think you guys see how it is. So if you have any questions, be sure to hit me up on Canvas, email or text me. Again, thanks for your attention.